Schneider here. Uh, this is the first Book B replica that we just finished. And it's really nice. Let's see. Uh, yeah. uh, now, this is the first replica. We wanted to make sure everything fit and it worked. Different people were making different parts for me and when it all came together we were happy to see everything fit and we adjusted everything and it's really nice. It sounds just like the original and maybe as good, maybe better in some ways. <clears throat> this is the first replica. Now, these things here, these are called shoes. They look a little like shoes. <clears throat> These are silver-plated brass, but they're, but they're not polished yet. And this brass is, is unpolished, as well as this brass. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> when the, uh, the second replica that's coming, it's going to be all silver-plated, all, all the brass, and it's going to be highly polished. It's going to be really beautiful. It's going to come in a black canvas case, velvet-lined, with... Teresa Vaughan's signature, her actual signature, in hand embroidered on the on the. It's like a, it fits like a glove. This case, it, <clears throat> you slide it in neck first, and then you snap it up here, and then right, it, it is like a diamond pattern here, and it says Teresa Vaughan, and then up on the neck there's a little section. It says John H. Buckby. It's like a tribute to them. It's really really a piece of history and it's like the best of the old world order, so to speak. I'm going to show you one of my main interests in the Buckby and the whole story is that there's a connection between early Appalachia and minstrel music, which Teresa got started with, and following right through the evolution, uh, you know, the banjo was very big and important on Broadway at the same time that Roger, that uh, Oscar Hammerstein the first was very big on Broadway. And Teresa Vaughan, probably, I wouldn't be surprised if she knew him. But anyhow, uh, it's interesting that Broadway, especially Rogers and Hammerstein, who classic Broadway, they really, it's like a direct evolution, it's the root of American music because it, old broad, Broadway started in the 1700s, you know, and then after Teresa left Broadway and died, the, the, the Tesla brought electricity into New York through Niagara Falls, 360 miles, and the um, New York got all lit up, and then Broadway got lit up, and, and then got more lit up and more lit up like it is now. It's just really lit up. Um, now, uh, the reason I'm telling you all this is it's, it's, like, it's like a DNA kind of thing. In other words, the banjo was really at the heart and soul of American music. Everything that we got, you name it, blues, rock and roll, everything, ultimately it, you can trace their roots back to the banjo and to the slaves who were playing the gourd. And the white people were very uh, interested, maybe not so much in the gourd, but in the the attitude of the music. It was a little freer, much much freer than what what they were doing. You know, it wasn't a little written down, and it was kind of improvisational, kind of the beginnings of jazz, really. But anyhow, as time went on, uh, different people got involved with the banjo, and uh, one of the earliest people who really hit the top in a big way all over the country, Broadway, every place, overseas. She was loved like way out there. Teresa Vaughan. Now, what was so special about her besides that she was beautiful and everything, but she had a sparkle about her and she was very integrative. She took the Appalachian and minstrel and slave music really and worked on it and even she did things on Broadway that go back way like 1848 on the website TeresaVaughan.com you can see some of the stuff that she did I mean unbelievable uh, unfortunately she was never recorded 
uh, uh, Thomas Edison was supposed to record her, but some, she, she got sick and passed away before that happened, apparently. So all we know is the, the, the sheet music that was left behind, and especially what people said about her. And, and look at my book, you, you wouldn't believe it. It's like, she's the best. And, and maybe there was never anybody before her who was that great, and even after. So in a way, she's like the founding mother of American music and culture and Broadway and that whole thing. Uh, just like George Washington is important for government in America, Teresa Vaughan is that important in the arts and, and it's, it's really amazing. I, I want to show you a little bit in this video that I'm going to do now uh, about the uh, her evolution. And when, when this when this video is over, I'm going, to, I'm going to start playing. So this is kind of an introduction. Uh, I'm going to start off showing you some, like a medley of early Appalachian, you know, you know, old, very old music. And some of them, one or two of them, you may even know. Uh, I'm going to do Joel Sweeney's, uh, who's the guy who developed the banjo as we know it today. Uh, Johnny Booker. I'll do a little, a little bit of snippet of each one. I'll do a little bit of Johnny Booker, and then from that same era, I'll do the Oh Susanna, which I'm sure you know, and that was very popular right around the time of the beginning of the banjo, as as we know it. And um, then also uh, Turkey in the Straw, which is a classic American folk tune, and it really fits the this 1880 replica. Uh, Buckby, it fits it perfectly well, but the the thing that I'm going to try to point out in the vi in lesson two in the video coming right after this one, it's very interesting that when you see a Broadway show, Rodgers and Hammerstein, you don't think oh hmm, Appalachia, or you don't think hmm, minstrel show, you, you don't it doesn't it, because it's so dressed up and in, enhanced and you know really nice. But down at the root of it, 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 down deep in the basement, is the banjo, so to speak, because you'll see, I'll try to em emphasize that, I'll show you, you know, what, the, the interesting thing that I'm leading to is that Ed, I'm going to start off showing you those few, you know, Johnny Booker, uh, a, a Turkey in the Straw, and, and, uh, and, and, and Oh Susanna, let's say, and then after that, uh, I'm going to skip a whole bunch of stuff because there's some beautiful stuff that I really need a singer to really bring them out. I'm not a singer, unfortunately, but I have sheet music, actual, real sheet music that I uh, uh, from Teresa, and on the website you can hear of somebody playing it on a keyboard and you get an idea. Very, very nice. Sounds awesome on the banjo. Eventually I'll be showing all that stuff. but. The point that I want to make on this video that's coming afterwards, after I do those few Appalachian songs and old time things, I'm going to jump right ahead to 2013, let's say, and, and, and the, the, the last version of Cinderella by uh, 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 Rodgers and Hammerstein. And it is amazing how it's, it's like Appalachia. It, 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 it's like the poor country cousin from the hills, you know, it's amazing. It's it it dug into Broadway, and it, it kind of just was part of Broadway, and Broadway was part of it, and and it's, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Okay, so this is like an introduction. I'm going to play next. I'm going to play Joe Sweeney, the guy who developed the banjo, jo Johnny Booker. That's his song. Then I'm going to play uh, 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 um, Oh Susanna, and then I'm going to play um, uh, Turkey and the Straw. Okay, see you in a few minutes.